Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the importance of pronunciation when learning a foreign language. I've seen a lot of people here in the United States try and often fail to learn foreign languages. And I've gone through this process myself. Like, I started studying languages in school. I took Latin and I took Spanish and German. And I ended up learning German and Spanish pretty well, but I found that I didn't really get that much out of the classroom environment in school. And I think one of the reasons was that there wasn't much emphasis placed on pronunciation. Like, if you think about how native speakers learn a language, when you're like a little baby, you're surrounded by all these sounds that you don't know and you're just listening, and you're kind of clueless and trying to make sense of this world around you. And you spend a significant amount of time, like months and months and months, before you even get to the point of being able to start babbling and trying to form these sounds yourself. And this is not really how we learn languages as an adult, or how we try to teach them even to children. Basically, we dive in and we start teaching people words and trying to get them to talk before they really understand the soundscape of a language. You can call it the phonology. That's the technical term for it. So each language has a different phonology, a different set of sounds that constitute the sort of units that it's made of. So, for example, in English, we have a lot of different sounds that are kind of represented by the alphabet, but the alphabet can be misleading because like you have a letter like A and it can have different pronunciations. For example, in the name Amanda, you have three A's, but the middle one makes a different sound from the ones on the end. You have Amanda. And this is one of the little complexities about phonology is that it's often a little bit more complex, or a lot more complex, than the written language suggests. Like, if you have the letter O in English, it can be pronounced in a lot of different ways, like dog and hog and bog, but you can also have like O as in tote bag, T-O-T-E, or you can have like two O's make a sound like food, or like book, and so on. If you think about it, English has a ton of different vowel sounds, and there are also a lot of consonant sounds that don't correspond to letters. Like you have the sh, ch, sh, ch, you have a uh, sound like z in the word azure. The soundscape of English is pretty complicated if you think about it. Also, there are those two th sounds like think and the, they're different sounds. It's confusing, and I'm pretty impressed by people who learn English well as a foreign language, because I'm like, it seems to me like a pretty tough language, even though it's my native language. But basically, this is how language works. There's this phonology, this soundscape, and when you dive into learning a new language, your brain is not yet tuned in to the sounds of that language. And if you really want to learn it well, you need to learn the phonology. You need to learn the sounds, and you need to learn how to hear them, and your brain needs to develop the mechanisms to process that information. And then, you need to do the very tricky work of figuring out how to produce those sounds with your mouth, which, in my experience, takes months. Like, you have to just keep trying, and you have to experiment, because you're going to need to break out of the box of the sounds that you're used to producing in your own native language, or other languages that you know. An example of a sound that is, I think it's actually a pretty easy sound to make, but um, it was tricky for me to make at first, is the Spanish R. Like, in American we have R like red, and in Spanish the word for red, like rojo, rojo, it's like a different sound and the, you know, like your, your tongue hits a point in your mouth, and it can kind of create this rolled effect, and that was really hard for me to do at first. Like, I had to really work at it. And in some cases, there's some sounds like, for example, in German, the R sound was even harder for me to learn how to produce, and I had to go online and watch some tutorials on YouTube, and 
I still can't quite get it right, but at least Germans can understand me most of the time, and at least I can hear it accurately when they pr you know, pronounce the R sound. So why is this important? If you don't master these sounds, what is going to happen? You are going to be trying to learn a foreign language, and your brain is going to interpret the sounds you're hearing in terms of your own native language, and they don't correspond in a one-to-one -one way. So for example, going between Spanish and English, the Spanish R is not the same as the American R, and furthermore, the Spanish D is not the same as the American D. Uh, in Spanish, the D, it's like your tongue is a little bit lower down, like closer to your teeth. So for example, there's this word, uh, cuidado, means caution, and if you were to pronounce it like in English, it would be cuidado, but that's not how it's pronounced. It's pronounced a little more like cuidado, and sometimes people soften it even more, and it's like cuidado. So it's like that D is really different. It's a different sound. And I notice that a lot of Americans, they learn Spanish fine in the classroom, and they're doing well on tests, but then when it comes to actually understanding native speakers speaking it when they speak really fast, they are completely lost. They're like, wow, these people are talking, I can't understand a word of it, it just sounds like gibberish, it's really, really fast. And I think one of the reasons is that they haven't really developed that mechanism in their brain to hear the sounds accurately. And one thing that happens is people will sometimes mishear the Spanish R as a D when people are talking really, really fast. And it's because the, the D in American English is kind of somewhere between the, the Spanish D and the Spanish R. So sometimes if you haven't developed that skill in your brain, you're going to misclassify that, and you're going to mishear words. So mastering the pronunciation can improve your listening comprehension. This was like a big thing that no one ever taught this to me, but I experienced it firsthand. I've experienced it in multiple languages, in German, in Spanish, uh, and I'm starting to work on other languages now, and I'm noticing the same pattern, that like when I master the pronunciation, my listening comprehension jumps way up. I've seen this in Japanese. Uh, Japanese pronunciation, it's tantalizingly simple. It's really easy to look at it and be like, oh, this is really easy to pronounce. But here's the thing, if you actually start trying to speak with native Japanese speakers, are you really hearing what they're saying properly? Because it is not as close to English as it seems. Like, you have these vowels, it's like a, e, i, o, u, and like, but, but the rhythm of the language is really different, and they don't shorten the vowels, they don't have vowel reduction the way English does, and so like a lot of people, they see a word and they pronounce it a certain way, and Japanese people can't even understand what they're trying to say, and then the Japanese people start speaking, and people will mishear the vowel sounds. Again, people often mishear the Japanese R, as a D. This is another problem, and it's close, it's close to the Spanish R. So it's like the same thing is going on there. So basically, what can you do using this knowledge? Like how, if you acknowledge, okay, pronunciation is really, really important when learning a foreign language, well, well what do you do with that? My first piece of advice would be to spend several months listening to a language before you really start diving in to learn it because that's the way native speakers learn. So you can do this by having radio playing in the background. You can look up news, streaming news channels online, and listen to just talk. And you're not necessarily going to learn that much in terms of words by doing that, but you're going to get accustomed to the sounds of the language. And then, I would also recommend reading some material online, and maybe looking up, up video tutorials that have graphics and stuff that talk about how to pronounce the language accurately. And I would also, I would especially search, search for questions like, what are the most mispronounced sounds in this language? And ideally find some native speakers and ask them, hey, when Americans learn to speak your language, what are the mistakes in pronunciation that they most often make? 
and what are the, the mistakes they make that make them harder to understand. Because you're going to get really valuable feedback if you ask people that question. And I've had people give me feedback on my own pronunciation when asking them things like that, and that's been really helpful. So then, when you do this, if you put in all this, this extra work up front to really master the pronunciation, I found that like, it, it makes it easier to then dive in. Like, I've noticed it improves my uh, ability to pick up words from context when listening to things like video online. Uh, it improves my ability to be understood when I'm speaking to native speakers. It improves my ability to connect the book learning to real world conversations. So like, I'll learn these vocabulary by studying online, by studying books, things like that. And if I've mastered the pronunciation, it'll be much easier to put that into use in the real world. Um, I also have found that it hugely reduces linguistic interference. An example of this that comes up a lot is Spanish and Portuguese. Um, they're very similar languages, they have a lot of overlap in vocabulary, but the soundscape of them is very different. The pronunciation is really, really different. And I found that really mastering those subtleties of pronunciation in the difference between Spanish and Portuguese has helped me to keep those two languages separate in my head, which has been really great. Um, so yeah, this is what I have to say. I know that's a lot to digest, but I hope if you take any one thing away from this, it is that pronunciation is super important and that it will really pay off if you learn if you learn to master it early on in your study of a language. I found that it's paid off immensely. You're going to save way more time in the long run if you put more time in up front mastering the pronunciation. Yeah, that's what I have to say. I hope you've enjoyed this. And please feel free to comment if you have anything to add. Thank you.